aside from having to do press where you ask, you know, ask and answer the same questions over and over and over again. How's your day Which going? I so, don't mind at all, Darren. I don't mind at all. Well, it's a pleasure to reconnect with you. I had the pleasure of speaking with you early into the pandemic when who knew when everyone was hitting the road again, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But things seem to be back to normal for Kansas and yourself. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, it was really a wide, wild perspective because during the, the pandemic, you know, when they first shut everything down, we're like, ah, well, we'll be back to work in two months, you know, kind of what you're hearing on the news, three months, but then four months, then five months. Yeah. And it really seemed at the time, it seemed like eternity because you didn't know when you were going back to work. And it, it's funny how uh, looking back, we didn't see each other for 13 months. But looking back now, that went by like the blink of an eye. Because, Darren, when you're in Kansas, there's never a shortage of things to do. <laughs> you're right. constantly working on music. Uh, for It's constantly keeping my chops up. And, you know, welcome to my nightmare down here. You know, my, <laughs> my, exactly. closet, my closet studio. Would you like to see one of my winter coats? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but hey. it, it really was wild to, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, to go through that time. But it's like, wow, one week back to work, and it seemed like we didn't miss a beat. And and now it does seem like back to normal, even though we've we've been on a, a pretty good hiatus now. Uh, I, I mean, it, it feels like crunch time to me because doing the 50th anniversary show and we're we're adding some new songs that have never been done before, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is really a lot of workload because for me anyway, because, you know, it's not only learning the songs, memorizing the, the songs, but get, getting them up to that standard where the, the Kansas audio has an expectation of, you know, our musicianship. I think uh, the bar is set higher for this band. Uh, because of the level of music agreed well you have been in the band for almost a decade now you joined oh. in 2014 oh. that is almost 10 <laughs> years when you joined the band how long did you think it was going to be for did you just think like three shows we'll see how it goes um, darren it's a it, it, good question uh it was so funny because I, when I first joined the band, I'm like, oh my God, if I could, if I could do this for two years, this would be fantastic. Three years would be like just a, <laughs> a dream, you know, and like three years, uh, the, my first two full years with, with Kansas, 2015, 2016, I was never home. Uh, that January of 2016 is when we recorded the Prelude Implicit. And I lived in Atlanta for a month and a half. And as mm -hmm. soon as we got done in the studio, boom, right back on the road. And in 15, we did 98 shows. In 16, we did 99. So, I mean, it, it's funny how when you're moving so fast, you really don't have time to think about, you know, it, it, it's going in front of your face so fast. You you look at the calendar and it's like, oh, well, look, we're, th th this is three months from now. We're playing here four months from now. And it's like, boom, before you know it, it's here. You yeah. Know? And, and, and the shows from three months ago seem like three years ago because you're doing so many and moving so fast. It's, it's, it's a wild perspective. A weird name drop for me to say. When I was talking to Peter Hook from the band New Order and I'm, Hey, I love both New Order and Kansas personally, but he was saying to me he's touring more in his 50s and his 60s than he was in his 20s, 30s, and 40s. Oh, my God. Please send him my sympathies. <laughs> yeah, so in, in your case, you're touring because you're a career musician for decades before Kansas. You are on the road more now than ever. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I was a... Uh... I was a, a common working hack uh, most of my life. Uh, and uh, Darren, I, I say this all the time. I really have lived a, a double life. Uh, I, I should really be like 120 years old right now. 
because I did have a day job and I, you know, I drove a truck around the streets of Chicago for more than 25 years amongst other jobs, but while I always, still performing music, while still performing since, yeah. you know, uh, uh, gosh, I was just uh, talking to a friend and he's like, do you remember playing your first bar? And I'm like, God, I think I was 18 and never stopped, never yeah. stopped. I've, I have always through my entire life, have had at least one working band that did out that did gigs and I, gosh there was, there was a time in the 90s i was in four working bands and having a day gig working 50 55 hours a week um it, there was no such thing as red bull back then you know right uh, how did i pull that off but uh it is it's uh, you know i have been a career musician but you know uh also uh a day-to-day -day labor uh so a d double life it really has been a double life but the music has never stopped with me and, and then getting into kansas is is just like you know pressing down on the accelerator to the floor right and as you mentioned earlier 50th anniversary of another fork in the road kansas yeah. has not slowed down are dates already booked into 2024? I'm not. I'm not asking for exclusives. I'm just curious. How far ahead does Kansas book stuff? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I don't know at this point. But uh, uh, I'll give you a little backstory on how our booking goes, because when we started the Left Overture 40th anniversary show, uh, I was talking to Phil, and he's like, you know, we're uh, I've been talking to Keith uh, and uh, you know, we're thinking about trying this in 12, maybe 15 markets to do that 40th anniversary show. So that's 12, 15 shows, maybe. And left overture ended up being 80 something. So went long over a year. Then we did point of no return 40th anniversary because the album came out a year after left overture. And right. that, we started when we finished left overture and that long surpassed left overture the point of no return 40th anniversary so it, you know billy greer when he announced the show was kind of kind of funny you know this you know billy would say okay welcome to the third year of the 40th anniversary yeah. <laughs> you know so with this being such a a huge uh milestone uh, with the band and, and such an intense show. Oh, boy, I, I don't see how it's not going to go into 24. Fingers crossed. Right. Uh, random I'll topic. Be fine. <laughs> exactly. Uh, besides your music and rock and all that, I'm a big fan of professional wrestling, and Kansas ah. hit the trending world in recent times because. The tag team, the Young Bucks, they started using Carry On My Wayward Son as their ring entrance music. Right. Is that the original version of the song or they're, that they're using or a re-record? Any idea? Oh, uh, that's the original that they're that they're using. And I saw that video where they're walking out in the stadium and all the people are going nuts. Oh, my God, that was so cool. And, you know, and that's just uh, good for the band, you know that's a good promo and really introducing Kansas, even though, you know, the kids might not know who the band is or what, you know, haven't heard the song before. It really is uh, initiating young people to that music. So that, that's all good. We call that job security. <laughs> and with that job security, are there wrestling fans within the Kansas organization or just happenstance? Oh, you should talk to our manager, J.R. Reese, huge wrestling fan, huge sport sports fan. Uh, it, the the kid, listen to me, kid. Well, he's probably forty something. And he's, <laughs> you know, uh, he's really into sports and just a walking encyclopedia. And, and he's really the one that monitors, you know, everything that's going on with Kansas stuff, Kansas music, and you know how it's uh, being spread out. A, amongst the public so he, he's a huge huge wrestling fan well what we've covered so far is anniversaries galore the road does not seem to end for kansas you're busy you're finding the energy and all that but 
When you're not busy with Kansas, where does your time go? Uh, the majority, of, majority, excuse me, <clears throat> right here. Uh, you know, I said I have, uh, I've lived a double life. Uh, and I, although I've been a musician my entire life, I really haven't been, uh, I, I, I'm in a band that guys were musicians exclusively their entire life and and at just such a uh such a, a great level of musicianship that mm -hmm. uh uh it's it's self-imposed uh but i really feel like i'm playing catch up with the rest of the guys so it's like when i'm home i love to practice and there's it, it's so rewarding to you know take a phrase of kansas music and you know kansas music can be pretty involved the time signatures and yeah you know, just chord structure and it, it's so rewarding to to figure out a piece and you know figure out the right notes and play it and bring it up to speed it, it it's it, it's really rewarding to do that and it, it's it is for me so that that's re really where i spend the majority of my time and even though my my job and Kansas primarily is is vocal and second secondary keyboard player. Uh, I'm also a, a a hack guitar player. You know, <laughs> I, I love playing guitar, and I actually, when I was a teenager, I actually started playing bass. You know, I would, you know, go home and play bass to Rush records until I was, you know, falling asleep at the wheel. You know, <laughs> but there uh, you go. Yeah. So it, it all comes back to the same bands over and over and over again. My last question for you related to that is in all the years of having to do covers, did you have to do Van Halen covers in the midst oh of all your cover God. bands? Absolutely. Uh, Roth covers and Sammy Hagar covers, you know, versions of Van Halen and uh, God, that Sammy can scream, can he? Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I really loved it all. Uh, and although I put my own spin on it, uh, I didn't want to emulate them purely. You know, I always had my own, my own kind of twist to, to every, every cover band that I, that I did good Lord, have I done it, everyone over the years, you know, in that classic rock genre, you know, and, you know, of course, a lot of Journey, a lot of Boston, a lot of Sticks, Van Halen, Rush, you know, uh, just, just so many. And, and it's really, uh, looking back at that time, it's, it's, it was really a, a way of developing my voice uh, over the years. Of course, you know, my idol Steve Walsh, you know, listening to Two for the Show, that live album, and just listening to Steve is just mind blowing his vocal ability. Sure. And of course, you know, it, it was my idols, you know, Steve Walsh, Steve Perry, Lou Graham, John Anderson, Brad Delp, you know, these guys that are just, in my eyes, iconic singers that really have helped develop my voice. Over, over the years and you know being such a huge Kansas fan uh just gave me a a long head start out of the starting blocks with the band so it was good for me and that voice continues to hold up so I look forward to seeing At you 61 in band live. years old <laughs> keep it up but uh Where's looking the forward to the all, next hun? <laughs> the next New York gig for you in Kansas. Don't know when it is, but looking forward to it and continued success at you, Ronnie. Thank you for your time, man. Darren, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. And please, everyone, kansasband.com. I can see where we're playing. Go to news, see what's going on with the band. Everything's on there and we'll see you soon. Done and done. Have a great rest of the day, man. Take care. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Outrocast.